oh, that'd be terrible. But if I kill myself in an accident, they'll be like, oh, that was too bad. But like life goes on, you know, like they'll be fine. I mean, and I've had this problem with, with girls a lot. You know, they're like, oh, I really care about you. I'm like, no, you don't. Like if I perish, like it doesn't matter. Like you'll find somebody else. Like that's not, that's not that big a deal. I don't know. Maybe that's a little too callous. My foot is improving, but it still swells up a bit. Rope! Pretty epic rappel. Uh, we're just commuting down the wall, kind of. We're just having a good old time. If you look at Soling El Cap objectively, there are probably six pitches that worry me the most. Just off the ground, there's some insecure climbing. And then free blast, pitch six being the one I fell off of, which is obviously a total bodge. Then the down climb to the Hall of Flake. And then the monster off with, with just super physical, difficult style of climbing. When you're in the monster off with, some part of you is always being crushed in the mountain. Imagine like the worst type of Pilates class in the whole world. Somebody like flogging you as you do it and occasionally like sandpaper and skin off your body. Telling you to hold the position until you freaking vomit. And if you lose the position, you die. The enduro corner in and of itself would have been the most difficult part of virtually any big solo I've done. Your feet aren't on, on any specific holds. What makes your feet stay to the wall is the amount of pressure that you pull with your hands. The harder you pull with your hands, the more your feet stick. The most demanding for your arms on the whole route. And you've climbed 2,500 feet to get to the enduro corner. So you're pretty fatigued. But the piece that I've always worried about the most is the crux, the hardest part. To get past the crux, you have to climb either the boulder problem or the Teflon corner, 2,000 feet off the ground, each of which I've fallen off many times with the rope. The Teflon corner is basically like a 90 degree corner of glass, which is ultra slippery. It just fills me with terror. Pushing against the two walls of it with my feet on glass, my palms on glass, and trying to make these little micro adjustments to keep my balance centered so that I can push evenly on all four sides of it. And then I imagine 2,500 feet of air beneath my feet. You know, like that's just a crazy thing to think about. The alternative is the boulder problem. But the boulder problem has a 10 foot section that's incredibly difficult. It's a very intricate sequence. You've got your right hand on a crimp, left hand on a side pull, and then you put your right foot onto this dimple thing. Right hand goes up to a small down pulling crimp, left foot goes into a little dish, and then you drive up off the left foot into the thumb press. That's the worst hold on the entire route, so you get maybe half your thumb on the hold. Then you roll your two fingers over the thumb, switch your feet, left foot stems out to this really bad sloping black foothold. Switch your thumbs. And then reach out left to a big sloping bread loaf type hold that feels kind of grainy. From there, either karate kick or double dino to an edge on the opposite wall. In some ways, it makes more sense to do the big two-handed jump because you're jumping to a good edge, so there's actually something to catch. But the idea of jumping without a rope seems completely outrageous. If you miss it, that's that. <laughs> 